print out the small two-for-one pattern from sciencetoymaker.org. It's in a PDF format. When you print it, don't change the scale. A page from a phone book is what makes the twin lighter weight glider. You'll also need tape, preferably clear and about half inch or 12 millimeters wide, but you could cut down wider tape. Then a plastic drinking straw, scissors, a straight edge, and a ballpoint pen. Lots of my students like to use magnifying glasses for some of the more intricate operations, but that's optional. But at least have good light. Your hands will have to be dry, not even a little bit sweaty. To fly the glider, you'll need some space with dead still air, except under rare conditions, perhaps around dawn or dusk when there's not even a little breeze. Walk-along gliding is best accomplished inside. Even air vents and cross breezes inside can cause headaches. We use the hallway of our school, and sometimes the gym if it's available. Although eventually you might be able to use your hands to create the surfing wave of air, it's best to start with a piece of cardboard, recycled campaign sign, or even a large book. Whenever you see a page turn, that's a good place to stop the video and complete the operation. Rough cut, which means cutting a little outside the lines, the glider pattern on the outermost solid lines. Save the rest of the paper pattern. In three places, prepare for where the pattern tapes to the telephone book paper. Cut out this notch in the back, and cut exactly on the outermost lines at the ends of the wingtips. Place the pattern on a piece of phone book paper. Put a small piece of tape over the cutout back notch, which will tape the papers together. Also tape the corners, but make sure the tape on this pattern only reaches this line. Eventually, this tiny part of the pattern will be cut off, but for now, it gives enough of a ledge for the tape to stick. If tape were to go farther, it would remain on the finished glider, weighing it down. Fine cutting the double papers on the outside solid lines is the next step, but keep two things in mind. First, imagine this line continues to a sharp point of a triangle, so there's some phone book paper left where the tape is stuck. Second, although the papers are stuck together in three places, they could slip relative to each other if you're not careful. Cut accurately. I try to cut exactly on the outside edge of the lines. The papers stay stuck together at the back notch and the sharp ends. Cut out this extremely narrow notch in the front Magnification is handy here. It's two cuts. Aim to cut each line through the middle, but I understand that's a tall order. Just give it your best shot. The cuts end at a point right where they reach these dashed lines. There are five dashed lines that need to be folded, some up and some down. I think making the folds is easier and more accurate if you gently and precisely weaken the paper fibers with the spherical tip of a ballpoint pen before you fold. Put the telephone book or a magazine under the paper first. Hold down the straight edge so the dashed lines just peek out. Don't press too hard and only draw a couple of times per line you can overdo it and weaken the paper too much. Right here, make sure this dashed line goes up to the long dashed line, but no further. Here too.
don't forget the two short dashed lines at the ends. Careful, they tend to slip as you draw. Start folding one of the front parts down. Fold with the thumb and forefinger right up to the intersection with the long dashed line, but not farther. Crease hard with a fingernail on a tabletop, but notice the crease does not continue past the intersection. It's curled a little, but not folded. Unfold it back, and fold the dashed line on the other side the same way. and unfold it back. Notice the paper has a memory of the folds that will give the glider a bit of three-dimensional shape. This long, thin flap at the back is called the elevator. It does not bend down as the front does. The up bend is called reflex. Try to use the straight edge to apply force evenly. Fold it all the way over to establish the fold in the paper fibers. Give the crease a couple of love taps. Flip the whole thing over and flatten it to only about 20 degrees up. How do you know what 20 degrees is? Remember the other things on the pattern page you saved? Cut out this angle pattern. The arrow should point to and touch the fold, but notice I can't get it there without the glider having to bend, but when I let up, it springs back up. We needed to establish a strong fold, but now you'll probably have to hold the edge over the ledge of a table to get it back down to about 20 degrees. That's more like it.